very warm welcome to everyone this morning. It's a bright and sunny day. Um, may the Lord God make our hearts bright for him Amen. as we jointly praise the Lord this morning. And to our um, internet audience, we are also happy that you, are, you have tuned our way and you're watching our service this morning. We believe that God that is blessing us here will also bless you wherever you are located. Amen. This is Apostolic Faith Church and we're located at number 13, Penn Hill Road, and that's in Bexley, DA53EP. We will be happy if you live locally and you enjoy our service to please come and fellowship with us. Um, and if you are not living locally but visiting at some point, we'll be happy to have you around. And God bless you as you do that. We will now um, join our voices together to praise the Lord as we appreciate the um, organ prelude or, or piano prelude that Brad Godwin gave us and then the orchestration, blessed be the name of the Lord by our choir and orchestra. And then we've, the choir has just sang, um, O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, and glorious is thy name. Uh, may the Lord God be glorified in our hearts today. Amen. We will now sing together as our song leader will come forth to lead us. God bless you all. Amen. CGS number 17, CGS 17, and we will sing verses 1, 2, and 3, CGS 1, 7, verses 1, 2, and 3. We are never, never weary of the grand old song. Amen. We'll sing verse one only. We are never, never weary. I lift thy name on high. Sing, Lord, I lift thy name. Lord, I lift thy name.
Amen. We are here this morning to praise God. Amen. So we will continue to do that in song this morning. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God. Jesus, Lamb of God. Amen. Let's sing that as well. How can I say thanks? But we'll concentrate on the chorus only. So God be the glory. Let's sing 3-0 from our hymn book, CJS 3-0. Oh, my soul, bless thou Jehovah, all within me, bless his name. Let's sing it together, then we stand to sing verse 4, so that we'll be laid in prayer.
As we bow our heads um, for prayer, Brian Sikak will lead us. Our gracious Master, how can we say thanks to you for the mercies countless as the sun, which daily we receive? But with a heart of gratitude we come and we say we thank you, Lord. We praise your name, O Lord, for the wonders that to us you have shown. For answers to prayers that we've prayed in this place, Lord, we are grateful. For taking us to the camp meeting 2019 and bringing each participant safely home. Lord, we praise your name. We thank you for the countless blessings that was recorded to those that we are present even to those that watch via the social media lord we appreciate you we thank you because you kept those that couldn't come we thank you because you blessed them too lord for this we say glory be unto your name we thank you for another spiritual year that you have started with us in praise, in worship, and in consecration to ourselves, to you. Oh Lord, receive our thanks. Amen. We thank you because this year is going to be a year of wonder. Yes. We thank you because you are behind your word to perform them. Yes. Lord, accept our thanks. Amen. This morning, our faith looks up to you yes. for great miracles. Yes. Lord, we thank you because you have called us. And we have approached your throne in faith. We pray that it will be a day of blessing. None of us will return the same. Therefore, Lord, come and honor your word. Your unction upon the preacher of this morning. Lord, we pray that you will honor your word. That we will return not the same. Said in your presence there is fullness of joy. Lord, bless us. Amen. Even those that are not here and perhaps are watching, Lord, we pray for blessing upon their lives. Amen. Those that are sick, oh Lord, heal. Amen. Oh Lord, those seeking for salvation, Lord, save. Amen. Those pressing on for the sanctification of the heart, Lord, sanctify. Amen. We pray for the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We know our pastor is not here. Lord, is out there, oh Lord, even for your walk. We pray that you come and honor Amen. your name, oh Lord. Amen. Wherever people are gathered in your name. Lord, in Africa, Lord, in Europe, in Asia, round about the world, even in America. Lord, we pray that you will bless your walk. Amen. Come and bless us, oh Lord. Amen. And make us a blessing this morning. Amen. We ask all in Jesus' name. Amen. We have the last special after which the word of exhortation will be given. God bless you all.
Our Bible reading for this morning's service shall be found in the book of Psalms, Psalm 113, starting from verse 1 to 9. <coughs> Psalm 113, starting from Psalm, uh, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Praise, O ye servant of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Two. Bless the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Three. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Amen. Four. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Five. Who is like unto the who is I unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on I? Six. Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heavens and in the earth? Seven. He riseth up the poor, he raised up the poor out of the dust, and lifted the needy out of the dung hill. Eight. That he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. Nine. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen.
Um, shall we please turn our Bibles to <clears throat> Revelation chapter 4? Revelation chapter 4, and I'll be reading from verse 8 to verse 11. Revelation chapter 4, from verse 8 to verse 11. And the four bees had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now, when those bees give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who lived forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that lived forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. This day is a day of praise and thanksgiving, and we just want to praise God, thank him, and worship him, for whom he is and for what he has done for us. We studied this morning a lesson that is indeed very appropriate for this time and for this day, considering that we've just returned from our 19th annual camp meeting. It's um, instructive that God in his own economy has arranged that our lesson today should be on praise and worship. You know, it's just... Um, shows how that God is mindful of the affairs of his people. We want to thank God for what he has done. Um, you know, the, the, one of our hymns says, count your blessings, name them one by one, and that it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Uh, I'm sure if any of us, or and all of us for that matter, were to be asked to be counting our blessings this morning, we wouldn't be able to enumerate them all. Even the blessings that we have received since we returned from the camp meeting. Um, somebody said before that the fact that we could sleep and wake up is a miracle. It is not cheap. It is the Lord's doing. Um, when I sleep and I dream dreams and then I wake up and I recollect my dreams, I just wonder where do those dreams come from? There are maybe some colleagues, even some childhood friends that we haven't seen for about 45, 50 years. And suddenly in a dream, you will see them and you'll be playing around and you will recollect some of your childhood um, um, fellowship together and the things that you did together. And you remember in your dream that you haven't seen for a long time and it will look so real. And then suddenly you wake up and you find that you are laying in your bed and you wonder where that has come from. Truly, the Bible says that we are wonderfully and fearfully made. Yes. Man is not ordinary. God has invested so much in us, and he continues to invest in us. And it is just our duty to return praise unto him from time to time. Yes. We must from time to time call to remembrance all the blessings of God. Psalm 103 verse 2 says, Forget not all his benefits. Yes. The benefits of God are numerous. We cannot count them all. Um, look at this morning, sitting down there, I, I was feeling very hot, and I had to signal to the ushers to please open that window. Now you, uh, And it came to my mind that in a few months' time now, maybe in, in about December, if any window is open, we'll be asking the ushers to please close it, and we'll be wondering, is the heater working at all? You, you imagine that it is the same God that will give us heat at the appropriate time and will give us cold at his own time. Um, our teacher was teaching this morning, and he said, we are on this planet Earth. It is rotating, yet we do not feel it. Yes. If, if we are, when in, in the course of his rotating, it doesn't shake, and we begin to feel, oh, we are almost falling off. We are falling off. Um, well, I, I know geography wasn't one of my best subjects when I was in school. Actually, I remember I was always failing it, and I, I never liked the subject. But... I have never come to understand how that the world is spherical yeah. in shape. And you can turn that globe round and round, and you see the various locations of the universe, where they are located. 
and yet nobody is dropping off as that globe is rotating. And people can dig and dig. When they want to build a very um, tall tower now, they will dig very um, far into the earth. And I wonder, they have never gone as far as, uh, enough as to dig from this side, and suddenly it will come out on the other side. It has never happened. So for me, it's a wonder of God's creation. Uh, we, one can just not comprehend. So sometimes I just give up on it, and I say I can never understand geography, nor can I ever comprehend the work of God. It is like an ant that is walking on the ground, and is, is wondering how a human being can be as big as they are, and it's wondering how our legs can sustain us, just two legs standing on them, and yet the ant, as little as it is, is standing on how many legs, and it's walking around. You can imagine if that ant is wondering how we're able to do it, it's never going to be able to comprehend it because that would be too much for that ant to comprehend. That is the way it is for us, that all of us could gather from about seven different countries that was announced during the camp meeting, we could gather together there for a whole week. And by the grace of God, the Lord took all of us back home safely. Yeah. That is a miracle. Yeah. In Portland camp meeting, um, we were about 25 or 26 different countries that were represented there. And everyone has gone back home safely. There is no incident of any type, um, no report of any accident happening anywhere. You know, for, because these things we enjoy from time to time, sometimes we may tend to take them for granted and just know that, yes, having taken off, we land safely. Well, if you have ever been in the air and your plane developed a fault or it ran into um, um, turbulence, you will know what it is like um, for one to fly safely and arrive safely. During the week, I, I heard in the news and also read in the newspaper of an aeroplane, a very light one that was flying in the, um, in the U.S., and because it suddenly developed problem, it had to land on the road, right on the road where cars were driving. Somehow, God did it that no car was hit. Uh, God made it to, um, to happen at a time that a policeman was around, and the policeman had to use his car to block the traffic from the back, from any car running and, and, and um, causing commotion on the road. You know, can you imagine what would have been running through the mind of not just those that were in the plane, but even the pilots? Because it is like the end has come. An aeroplane is like um, a coffin for living people. Because once you are inside, if it happens, well, that, that could just be the end of it. But we thank God. You know, um, during this camp meeting, people traveled on the sea. People traveled on the road. I was one of those that drove on the road. And um, yeah, I've always known that it takes about five hours from here to our campground. But I've always thought it was because it was a coach. And coaches are known to be a bit slow on the road. But we drove my own car. And um, but yet, it took us, I think, about six hours. I felt, wow, what a distance. And we drove that, um, that way and we drove back safely. No incident of any kind. It is the Lord's doing. Yeah. And we ought to just give God the praises and thanksgiving. Um, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts yeah. and minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. You know, it might be that having gone to Portland, maybe you even started by going to a Norway camp meeting earlier in the year, then you've also gone to Portland and you've gone to Wales, but the problem seems not to have moved yet. Try praising God. The fact that you are alive and you can feel that there is a problem there means that there is life in you. Yeah. And it means that there is hope that you overcome that problem. Yeah. You know, people defecate on their body without knowing. And it's, it will have to take someone to prompt them and say this is happening before they know. But yours is not like that. There are people that have problems in the world and they don't even know that they have problems and they have to be prompted before they know. But you are conscious of the fact that there is this issue that is yet to move. It is the doing of the Lord. The fact that you know that that problem is there, you let, let, let it also rest in your mind that God is bigger than that problem Amen. and that God can take that problem away. Amen. We want to just praise God and ignore those problems that seem 
to be adamant that, that appear like they are never going to move, I can assure you that they will move. Amen. I have testimonies of people that said before that they had one ailment or the other and that they had been praying to God over time for it and suddenly maybe God would just say, try praise or someone will encourage them and they will start praising God. And then maybe sometime in the future they just ask themselves, by the way, where is this problem that I used to have? The problem has gone. God has taken care of it. God is able to take care of our problems. We just want to count our blessings and name them one by one and find cause to say thank you to God this morning. God that has started his good work in us, he's starting to perform it. He will see it through in the name of Jesus Christ. Think of the Bible teachings that we had this year. In, be it in, um, in Norway, in Portland, or in Wales, God recognized the needs of his people, and he brought teachings that were appropriate to our needs. Um, I'm, I'm sure that as individuals, God will have used one or, um, or two or more of those Bible teachings and sermons um, to speak to our hearts. Uh, for me as a person, I know what God has taught me. I know what God has, has made me to realize that I need to improve on. I know um, um, the, uh, what God has spoken to me on my Christian work with him, how that I need to consecrate more, and I know God will help me. I don't know if God has spoken to you too in one area or the other. We want to praise God for those things. And you see, God also saved souls during the camp meeting, as he has always done. Uh, we had testimonies of people. I wasn't privileged to be fully at the West Camp meeting, but I followed virtually everything that happened there. Um, the, most of them, I followed it live. Those that I couldn't follow live, I, I caught up with later. And I had testimonies of people. Those testimonies were very, very um, inspiring. Yeah. People got saved from their lives of sins. Yeah. These are people that have grappled with sin over time. Yeah. I don't know if you had testimonies of people that had Islamic background, and suddenly God will reach out to them, and they got saved. Yeah. Yeah? And we, we thank God. Yesterday at our men's prayer meeting, while we were fellowshipping together at the back, I, I tried to, to make a joke um, that there was somebody, I, I, I just threw a question. I said, who knows, um, somebody among us here, that, as we sat around the table, who knows one among us here that got saved during the Wales camp meeting? And everybody went quiet. And somebody made one or two guesses that were wrong. And then the person that got saved said, I actually got saved. Yeah. And I happen to know, even from Wales, that that brother got saved. He's been in our midst for a while. I know his wife has been praying to God for a long time. But you see, we praise God that this year, the Lord saw it fit yeah. to say, yes, this year he wants to write his name in the book of life. And God did that for us. Yeah. Remember many testimonies that we heard of people. You remember that sister? who also came um, from an Islamic background and that said that she was always antagonistic of people preaching Jesus Christ. Uh, but she said one, one glorious day, she met a man of God, who by the grace of God is also one of us. And this man of God invited her, of course, she, shot, she tried to shut him up again. But leaving that uh, um, brief meeting, she became troubled. She got home, there was no peace. And she began, a Muslim began to ask about where was the nearest church around? Until um, suddenly that same brother called her again to say, are you free today to come to church? She said she jumped at the invitation and she went. The same sister said she had been told that she could never have a child. But we praise God. Amen. She attended the camp meeting with that child. Yeah. The child is a big girl today. Yeah. That is what God can do. Yeah. You see, if we, if we don't um, realize that God is doing all these things in yes. our lives, yes. sometimes we will seem to magnify our problems more than God. But God is far, far bigger than all our problems. Yeah. I remember also hearing the testimony of a sister who said that her daughter was always having, suffering from um, issue of blood. Uh, every, virtually every month, hers was always different, you know, the way it happened to her. But she took it to the Lord in prayers. And this year, by the grace of God, she was able to testify to the goodness of the Lord. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, I am the Lord that healeth thee. God does this in our midst from time to time. Yes, people might have problems during the camp meeting. I was involved in praying for people that fell sick. But the good news is that the Lord healed them all. Amen. The Lord gave us victory. Amen. That is wonderful. And that is what the Lord can do. Amen. You know, there were requests um, from people during the camp meeting that were saying, we should thank God for them. 
those that testified of um, salvation, those that said, thank God that God sanctified me this year. Thank God that God baptized me with Holy Ghost and fire. And did you also hear the young people talk about what God did in their midst? The person that led their prayer meeting here on Friday um, delved into it a little bit and said that the youths came together and had a wonderful prayer meeting and God manifested himself among them. Shouldn't we be thankful to God? that our young people are showing interest in godly things, that they could come together and say, you know what, rather than go around playing, let us come together and pray. While others were sleeping, they were there, tarrying before the Lord, and God did not disappoint them. We want to thank God for that. You know, we want to thank God, as I said earlier on, for joining Mercies, and we want to remember that while at the camp meeting, you know, sometimes I do wonder, um, because, maybe because of my background, where I come from, uh, because there even a little house like this, you want to build a fence around it. Sometimes the fence is higher than the house. Yeah. And you are wondering if people are living inside that place. Well, if you jump up a bit, you might see the roof of the house inside. But there are fences here and there just to guide, um, to ward off attacks from um, unwanted people. Where, can we, have we ever imagined um, at Wales that we don't, do, we don't have those high rising fences and yet God will be there to protect us. God will be there to keep us. You know, we will go, we will sleep. And when we sleep, we just sleep. We just sleep. We, we're not worried. We're not bothered. And when we wake up in the morning, we thank God for it. That is the doing of the Lord. And we want to just say, God, we thank you for it. The Bible says in Psalm 3 verse 5, I lay me down and slept. I awaked for the Lord sustained me. It is the Lord that is sustaining his people. You know, some, sometimes um, you, you wonder, some people that you probably haven't seen for a very long time, and then suddenly you see them, and these are brethren. You know, somebody said years back, he said, even a brother, uh, when you part ways, and you don't see each other for years, um, he said, you need to check again when next you meet, if they are still in the Lord. But you know the Lord is faithful. When we meet such people, what do you find? That common cord is still there. You find that they are still in the Lord, and you are also still in the Lord. And the fact remains that we might part ways on this earth, but in heaven, as um, our song leader said this morning, we will be reunited. Yeah. And when we are reunited, we are not going to part anymore. Yeah. Heaven is going to be a beautiful place. Yeah. And we just want God to help us that we will make it to heaven. Yeah. You know, this morning, I want us to um, um, recall and just, and just think back of the goodness of the Lord. You know, for me, sometimes um, um, the Lord helped me. I just sit down. I seem to recap. I will think back where the Lord has brought me from. Yeah, um, when you were born in a village where there was no light of the gospel, I grew up in a family where there was no distinction between a Christian and an idol worshiper. There was no distinction between a Christian and a Muslim. All of us were together, you know, doing things together. When it was the time for masquerades to come out, we would go and celebrate with them. We would eat with them. When it was um, um, harvest time in the church, the, the, um, the, the pagans and the Muslims would come around and rejoice with us. When it was time, I was telling a brethren at the um, fellowship yesterday after our prayer meeting that I had a cousin that was a Muslim that lived with us. Because of the special meal that my mother would prepare for him at the end of his fasting every evening, I chose to fast too so that I could eat of that food. It was that bad. There was no distinction. And, you know, suddenly God will fish out a boy from such a situation and decide that he wanted to save him. I, I grew up knowing only one person in our entire community that knew the Lord Jesus Christ. And this person was chased away from the house and her belongings were brought to the open and set ablaze, and she was sent out empty-handed. That was the kind of um, um, thing that I grew up with, and yet the Lord will fish me out. I don't know where the Lord fish you out from. You know, you want to also think back. I think one of our brothers here will say that when the Lord saved him, that before the Lord saved him, he used to have what the Bible calls curious, um, 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 you know, all, the, all these things that people use to consult the occult world. He said he had them, that, but when the Lord saved him, he had to throw those things away. And I remember very well that I used to have a, um, um, a charm in the Kabbalah, um, um, Calabash, yes, that was wrapped in a white linen. 
And the herbalist that gave it to me said, I must always give it blood every year. That the year I forgot to give it blood, it will ask me. And if, when that charm, when an idol will ask you for blood, it's like asking for your own blood because you have failed to give it what it should eat. But I thank God that before it was one year, before the anniversary of him giving me that charm, the Lord saved my soul. Amen. And I threw that thing in the latrine. And up to today, nothing has asked me for my blood because the Lord gave me the victory. I don't know where you are coming from, what the Lord has saved you from. Um, uh, their sister was answering the question, in the, uh, making the contribution in the Sunday school this morning. She said, when you think about what the Lord has delivered you from, when you know where you are coming from, when you know the work that the Lord has done in your life, um, she, she also said that those that were born, in, in, in the church, born in the gospel, as we always say, they may not appreciate it. But those of us that have gone from place to place, those of us that have seen um, different types of things out there, that we have eaten all kinds of things, you know, sometimes soup without oil, soup without uh, anything, it's got to be white soup that you must eat. You've got to sleep in a particular way. There are some things you must put across your door to be able to sleep very well. There are charms that you must use to rub your body. There are those you must keep under the pillow before you could sleep very well. And the Lord has brought you out of all of this. And today you can sleep very well. And you don't have to be bothered about all those things. Are those, things, are those not enough reasons for us to praise God? As our dear sister did say, when you think back where the Lord is taking you from, you have cause to say, God, thou art worthy to be praised. Thou art worthy to receive all glory and honor. Do you have children at home that are obedient, that listen to you? Do they come with you to church? Thank God for them. I, if, have, uh, have they stopped coming with you to church, but they still recognize you as their father or as their mother? Praise God for them. Because there is hope for them. God will bring them. Just thank God. Praise God for what the Lord has done. And as we do that this morning, God will perform more wonders in our lives. I invite you to the altars of prayer. Let's come together to praise God. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb 
that was slain from the foundations of the earth. Worthy is the Lamb that taketh the sins of the world. Oh, we thank you, Lord. And we join the brethren and say, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Almighty God. Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. Lord, accept our thanks. As we come before thee in bended knees, heal us, Lord, save us, Lord, sanctify us, Lord, fill us with the Holy Ghost and fire, answer all our standing prayers, give us a reason to praise thee in all our ways. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.